You are now listening to Vibe Selection with Kyra, where you can get the real on today's hot topics. Well, welcome everybody, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Vibe Selection. I am your host, Kyra, and on today's episode, I want to come on and talk about a few different things. Now, to start off with, I want to talk about uh, Nicki Minaj and J. Cole album release. Now, Nicki Minaj and J. Cole recently released their albums. Nicki Minaj re-released her mixtape for uh, Be Me Up Scotty, and it has been doing numbers on the chart. Uh, The queen hasn't put out a lot of music in quite some time, and she really hasn't really been active on social media. I know, to be honest with you, I feel like there have been a huge smear campaign that has been put out against Nicki Minaj over the past couple of years. And I know she just recently gave birth to her son and she was dealing with, you know, the loss of her father just recently as well. So I know that she's been through a lot over the past couple of years. And then everybody knows the whole controversy with Cardi B, you know, um, that whole thing with the media and people pinning them against each other. Um, so it's 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 nice to see that her album has absolutely been doing phenomenal you know, her last studio album, Queen, was in 2018, and that went actually to platinum last year, and it peaked number two on the Billboard charts, uh, 200, and Be Me Up Scotty is the first mixtape out of any re-release mixtape that has gone number one for those of you that do not know. And I must say that, you know, for I know some people may not be familiar with Be Me Up Scotty, but those that keep their ears to the streets and listen to hip hop music, they already know about Be Me Up Scotty and all the amazing songs that are on there. I will say personally, um, Nicki Minaj's Shy Rack song featuring G Herbal is one of my favorites. And of course, you know, Seeing Green is um, another one of my favorites as well. So it's nice to see, you know, some real talent being put back on the charts. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that go for everybody that has not checked that checked out her um, mixtape yet. I would definitely highly recommend everybody to go check out Be Me Up Scotty. Get that download that stream that whatever you want to do with that. Go get that and listen to that now. Another one that just dropped is that new J. Cole album. He is another artist that hasn't really put out music in quite some time. Um, his last album, K.O.D., that was featured number one as well on the Billboard charts, um, 200. And then recently he just released his off season album. And I must say, I absolutely love every single song on that album. I mean, J. Cole can do no wrong in my eyes. His KOD album was super hot and all his other albums before that were hot. So it's no surprise that, you know, all his songs on his album I've listened to back to back. So he's one of my favorites. Now, I will say an interesting fact about J. Cole is that even though he signed to Rock Nation, you don't really see him much on social media and you don't really see him active when it comes to Rock Nation. I know that Rock Nation has their annual brunch where they have all of their talent um, that's signed to them come out for this particular brunch that's out every year. You know, you got all the big name celebrities. Of course, Diddy shows up, you know, Queen B, Beyonce is there. Everybody's there. But... I've noticed over the past couple of years, you don't hear, you don't see or hear J. Cole talking about Rock Nation, and you don't even hear Jay Z really speak much about J. Cole. So that's another interesting thing to think about. So, and then you don't really even see any backing. You know, his last album, KOD, it didn't have any promotion. It was like, it was, it was told that it was going to come out, I think, like three days before it actually dropped. So, like, it didn't have any major backing behind it and it still did numbers it still shot to number one in the billboards 200 list and then this album this didn't have any major backing or promotion for it either this was just kind of like a spur of the moment thing it seemed like to me and it still did numbers so that just all it just shows the amount of greatness in j cole's work and the amount of you know amazingness that he puts out when it comes to his music and his craft in general and it also shows the loyalty of his fans 
fan base, you know, in this world where we have so much mumble rap these days where these rappers aren't really even rapping about rapping about anything with substance. You know, everything is just a straight gimmick. It's nice and refreshing to see that two rappers that have been in the game for quite some time are still able to do it and do numbers and still be successful and shoot to the number one on the charts, you know, where you have all these artists that are just like throwaways nowadays when it comes to the rap game. So big shout out to J. Cole. And once again, y'all, if you haven't listened to the album, go ahead and listen to um, the J. Cole album and the Nicki Minaj album, honey. You won't be disappointed. Thank me later. I so I'm gonna get on to my next topic real quick. Now, this is something that has been on my mind for quite some time now. And this is in regards to the COVID vaccine, 19 vaccine. COVID-19 vaccine, excuse me. Now, I am all for people taking it because they feel it's necessary for them. And I just want to make a disclaimer that I'm not an act um, anti vacciner in any way, shape or form. I have taken vaccines before in the past. So this statement has nothing to do with me being an anti vacciner <laughs> But I am someone that feels like if you feel like it is medically necessary for you to take the vaccine, whether you have a pre-existing health condition, whether you are someone that has had COVID in the past and you still are experiencing symptoms from the COVID from COVID-19, or if you're someone that is older and you feel like it is necessary for you to take the vaccine because you feel like you're a little bit more susceptible to actually catching COVID, go ahead, do you. I'm all for that. Do what is medically necessary for you. What I'm not about is that you have all these so-called wannabe practitioners out here trying to dictate whether or not you need to take the vaccine. You have people out here that are talking about if you don't take the vaccine, then you are risking other people's health and just all these all this craziness that I've been hearing about in the streets. And I've been hearing that people got in heated debates in in regards to, you know, people not taking the COVID-19 vaccine. Now, unless I'm being told by a doctor that I absolutely must take this vaccine, you as a person have no right to dictate to me or anybody else what they should do. I'm not about that at all. Now, I personally still don't trust this vaccine. There is not enough research on the vaccine to prove its effectiveness. And there are a lot of effects from it that they really are not talking about. Now, we know about some of the common effects from taking the vaccine, such as um, muscle pains, headaches, nausea, vomiting, um, uh, chest pains, um, diarrhea, a lot of other uh, side effects that are more common when it comes to the vaccine. But what people are not really talking about is the alarming amount of rates in which all of these side effects are happening to people. Now you have certain venues, you have certain restaurants and even jobs now where if you do not get the vaccination and you don't have the car to prove that you actually receive the vaccination, you can't even work there or go there. Now, the because of the recent federal employment guidance uh, protection for private employers, they can mandate that a person receive a covid uh, vaccination before working for their company. However, in general, it is not something that most companies require and they're not allowed to require that. But my number one thing is, why is it that this whole COVID vaccination is being so pushed when it comes to people taking it? Now, let's just look at something really quickly, right? Every couple of years, there's always some killer virus that comes out, right? You know, in recent times, we had um, the the swine flu, the H1N1 flu. And to remind everybody, people don't, for those who may not really know or be familiar with, the H1N1 has been out since 1914. 
that's the first time the H1N1 virus had actually broke out. And it had nothing to do with what they said happened in 1914, where it was about a, a flu that was brought on by birds, right? And the H1N1 in recent times is more so due to um, farmers in Mexico, they said, coming in contact with uh, pigs. Now, <laughs> what I don't understand about that whole theory is like this. People have been hurting pigs for thousands and thousands of years, right? So if people have been hurting pigs for thousands and thousands of years. How is it all of a sudden now people are catching a virus from hurting these pigs, right? Think about that, number one. The second time the H1N1 came out was actually called the H2N2, which was like a sister of the H1N1 virus. And this happened in 19. 1943. Then come in recent times in the the mid to the late 2000s where you had the H1N1 that came back around, right? Then we had the whole Ebola situation, right? That came around. They said that it was brought on by some monkeys in Africa. They always fucking with people in Africa. Like, leave, leave my people alone. We've been through enough. They always try to give Africa some killer ass disease. And they always try to mass vaccinate the damn country and let off some damn virus that they decided to get in, that they decided to create in the fucking lab. Now, I will say this. I personally believe that this um, virus was definitely brought on um, in a lab. It was definitely bioengineered. It is not something that's natural. Do I believe that human DNA is put in it along with some animal DNA to create this killer virus? Absolutely. If you ask me, um, there is there there is no doubt about that. And with the new investigation that Biden is having um, with Wuhan, China laboratory that they feel like was the creators for the coronavirus, um, that 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 proves that definitely without a shadow of a doubt that, you know, this was definitely something that was a bioengineered weapon. Why it was used? I don't really know. We are still going to find out by this investigation what the actual, you know, situation is. But my thing is, why is it that the United States of America is trying to push this vaccine? Now, even when they going back to my point about the H1N1 and the whole Ebola situation. Now, they had the vaccine there and they definitely encourage people to take the vaccine. However, it was never pushed as much as it is now in today's time times. And if you ask me, my theory behind this situation is, although United States of America may or may not be involved in the creation of this whole, you know, virus or whatever, and this may be something that was just solely engineered in China. We don't know that. That's still something that is still up in the air. My thing is, we are still the only country out of all of the countries in the entire world that has not been able to get their economy up and compared to all these other countries. Why is that? Italy, the first country that pretty much had the worst outbreak with COVID-19, they've been able to get their economy back to normal. Not saying that they don't have any outbreaks still, they still do, but they're nowhere near as bad. All of these countries, if you really look at it, are not near that were talked said to have a horrible outbreak in COVID-19 are not really impacted as they were when it first happened. But why is it that the United States is and why is it that our economy has not been able to get up and going again now as far as them pushing this vaccination situation one interesting thing is when I was doing my research on this topic I was looking at the effectiveness of COVID-19 and the statistics. Now, if you really Google this shit, you don't hear anything subjective about this vaccination. Everything from videos to articles on it are encouraging from even looking at the news is encouraging everyone to go and take this COVID vaccine shot. It is saying is the best thing you can do. The, the, the statistics prove it, you know, all of all of this effectiveness is 100%, 90%. And they got all these different percentages that they're throwing out. But most of the percentages are ranging from like 93 to 100% effectiveness um, when it comes to taking these vaccinations. Now, how is that possibly true when you don't really have any statistical data? You've only really tested a couple of thousands of people to show its effectiveness on the COVID vaccine shot. Another thing is, 
And let me let me get my statistical data real quick for y'all, since y'all probably just think I'm talking real quick. Now, in the United States of America, there have been over there has been 132 million vaccinations given total so far within the United States and 16.7 million people here in the state of California have um, received COVID vaccination um the uh, COVID-19 vaccinations. Now, all the side effects that they have listed here are swelling, redness, pain to headache, chills, fever, muscle pain, nausea. Um, They've all been reported. Now, it says that one to six people in the ranges of 18 to 55 have reported that they felt side effects. And they said the second dosage has been the worst in, in receiving side effects from it. And according to the CDC, age groups 18 to 55, they say the younger people report 88.7% of a reaction to one of the side effects and 79.7% of older people from these groups report to having at least one side effect from the vaccine. This is seven days, the first, the, uh, excuse me, day one to seven days after receiving their vaccinations. Now, to me, most when it comes to most vaccines, let's just break this down real quick. Most of the times there's a lot of placey bowls has been happening where they're testing it to see whether or not it's actually effective. And that happens usually for years, you know, um, when they're when they're doing their tests on these things. My thing is this vaccination was literally rushed out. No one really knows it's effective. And it's like I said, because there isn't really any data to back it. It's just been something that was created out of nowhere and pretty much everybody is a guinea pig for it. Whether you like hearing it or not, that is really the facts behind it. Now, like I said before, if you are someone that feels like you are in danger of catching COVID-19 and you feel like your chances are lessened by taking the vaccine, well, we all know that that's not true. You can still catch COVID-19 even if you take the vaccination. Now, I will speak from a personal standpoint. I have known people that have taken the vaccine and this stuff is not reported that have been paralyzed. There's one person that has been paralyzed from the left side of their body. I have another person that I know who's uh, significant other got the, the COVID-19 shot vaccination and excuse me, vaccination. And they caught COVID right after that. Um, I've heard of, but I know someone that's died from actually taking, you know, COVID-19 vaccination. And a lot of these things are not really being reported. Like I said, when I was doing my research on it, all you're really seeing is things about encouraging everybody to take the COVID vaccine. Now, like I said before, my thing is, this is a perfect, why the United States will want everybody to take the vaccine? Well, let's get into that. We all know that they give these vax every every like I said, every couple of years, they always come out with some killer disease. They're always trying to vaccinate everybody. And that has to do with population control, population control people. Now, why would the United States of America want to do that? Well, we're killing off our earth. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, we we've been dis- destructing this earth for a very long time. And the best way to get that under control is by giving you killer diseases every couple of years. I mean, hello. And then giving you a vaccine. So in this case where you have a virus that does not even have any type of cure for it and people are so desperate because no one knows how you actually catch it. I mean, I've heard of people whose whose spouses have called caught COVID, they didn't catch COVID, but somehow like a random family member catches COVID. And like and the reason for you being able to get it, no one really knows how. So in this particular situation, what I really feel like is people are jumping the gun to take the vaccination out of fear. This is what they want to do. They want to derive fear in people. And this is a perfect way. If I let fear feel it, fear in you. We know we we have the virus out there. We know that there's no cure for it. But this is a perfect opportunity for us to give you a vaccination. Now we can get population control. Why do you think that this disease has targeted a lot of older people? Because the 
because they see it as older people as people that they can't really make any money off of. You know, most of the times when you're older, you're on Social Security or disability, or whatever the situation may be. And a lot of times you have all these pre-existing health conditions that are just going to worsen and worsen and worsen over time. And a lot of times when you're older, you're getting a lot of government assistance. And we know the government don't like giving out no free money, honey, even though it really ain't free because us taxpayers got to work to put into that money. But still, it's like, you know, the government doesn't want to do that. So the perfect person to get rid of, of course, would be older people. Then after that, let's work on the other people. So giving this vaccination was a perfect recipe for the the American government. Oh, yeah, we want to give these people a vaccination is a perfect opportunity. You know, they're gullible in this situation. And this is why they're also giving out all of these incentives to people. I mean, okay, now let me just say here. I love me some Krispy Kreme, okay? I have Krispy Kreme every Saturday morning, honey. I have more than one because I can't help myself. But if it's between catching diabetes and catching the virus, I mean, which one would you choose to live with? How is that any better? Then you have places giving you, it's like Target, giving you $5 coupons for taking the vaccination. Then you have places like Safeway giving $10 promotions. I mean, it just it's just kind of boggling my mind and this is something that you've never ever seen or heard before and and it just doesn't make any sense to me so i want you guys to take a listen to this video clip real quick modicum of normalcy (laughs) here's the deal you keep talking you keep talking thank you crispy no whoa 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 sit back down there are hold on a second no no put that down okay only if you have a covid card Oh. Get a vaccination. Oh, Krispy Kreme is giving a free donut to anybody who shows their COVID so that's card. That's illegal. Well, I, mean, I think I can still eat a and- donut. <laughs> okay, Dylan. I know we have to get up. That's right. You one get okay. You can get one a day. Which one do I if want? If you show, they're all the same. No, they're not. They're glazed. Different shapes. <laughs> no, they're all pretty much circular. We've only got three minutes for this whole. Sorry. Thing. Okay, <laughs> this is really fantastic. Okay, you you should have two since you. No, got your no, COVID no. Card. Let's. Yeah, here so, we what's Krispy Kreme doing there? They're doing so the, one a day. No. You get a free donut. You throw, show your your. Uh, do you carry that around with you everywhere? Uh, no, I just knew we were getting Krispy Kreme. Oh. Today. <laughs> Hold on a second. We can't. Now I'm not allowed to hand these out so guys <laughs> just one at a time i don't think each one of you can grab it you don't have your card. you don't have your your vaccine card yet. neither do you but you yeah, got one joseph go ahead go so. for it joseph i don't think joseph even eats donuts i think he does <laughs> way too healthy for a donut something seems more unsanitary about this than actually just handing someone a donut wow it's a great way to I'll never, I'll never look at a Krispy Kreme the same again. It's, it's a great way to incentivize vaccines. That's right. And, and uh, for employees, they're opening up for four hours of paid time off. Oh, my so, God, that's so good. Isn't that good? I just, yeah. I haven't sat in this chair oh God, and eaten so food. Good. And so by the long. way, let me tell you about a new study uh, from the New York Times, the Journal of the don't, don't American the Medical Association. <laughs> Found on average, don't do that. Adult participants gained about one and a half pounds every month <laughs> during the I just pandemic. gained one and a half pounds this segment. It literally is the COVID-19. <laughs> what is it about the Krispy Kreme donut that makes it so spectacular? It's a- no, I mean, I just think that's just kind of silly. Now, like I said, as much as I love, you know, Krispy Kremes, um, I don't see why having getting the vaccination should be. A, a prize that you need to get for getting the vaccination. You know, you're doing this because you care about your health. So the fact that there is all these incentives that are happening, you know, that you, that's something that is great, but I don't really see why that is absolutely necessary. Now, in terms of all the statistical data in regards to the vaccine, let me just point this out for you guys. So before COVID-19, there was a vaccine tracking system called PRISM that would track all the side effects you may experience after receiving a vaccine. And um, this was used during the H1N1 outbreak. And it was even around way before the H1N1 outbreak. It had been around for over a decade. And how it worked was it was linked to four large um, health plans in, in, in different parts of the United States. And um, 
it was linked to um, eight uh, state immunization registries and it has data for and it had data for over 60 million people was used, like I said, for over a decade. And this allowed um, them to track a wide variety of side effects from the vaccine once it was given. Now, what I find oddly enough is when the pandemic had hit, the FDA decided to repurpose it instead continuing to use this data um, detector in, instead of using this data detector um, that could uh, detect side effects from over 60 million people um, after the COVID-19 vaccine. Um, they decided, like I said, to repurpose it and create this other uh, data link called BESS that didn't that hadn't even been tested on its level of effectiveness. And that is what they're using currently when it comes to tracking side effects with COVID-19, with the COVID-19 vaccine uh, side effects. Now, mind you, we have over 100 million people that have been vaccinated so far in the U.S. This tracking, new track data link tracking system for the COVID-19 vaccine only has 6 million people using it and missed 12 million people in nine different hospitals that were detecting issues with the Johnson and Johnson shot. And this is according to a CDC official. So y'all ain't get no official than that. It's coming straight from the horse's mouth. It also just started collecting data for 15 pre-selected issues among Medicare recipients. And around June, they say they will be using it for commercial use and that it doesn't monitor patients after taking the test either. Now, this to me doesn't even make any sense. Why would you use a tracking system that proved to be effective in instead using a new system that has improved its effectiveness and that's only measuring 15 pre-selected um, side effects. I mean, how does that prove all of the side effects that are happening within these people that are experiencing symptoms? It's not even talking about all of the symptoms. It is 15 symptoms that they're selecting and they're saying, yeah, this is all the symptoms people are experiencing. But yet with PRISM, they were able to um, collect data on every sort of symptom people were experiencing from taking these vaccines to be able to have the proper, you know, data when it when it comes to the effectiveness of these different vaccines previously. So that just doesn't make any sense to me. So there could be people out there that are experiencing severe symptoms. And because they only have six million people that are within the system signing up for it, they're missing out on a whole group of people. Like I said, there's been over 100 million people that have taken the vaccine and I'm sure there's way more, you know, people than that that have experienced symptoms. Like I said, I personally know people that have experienced symptoms from taking this vaccine. And like they said on the CDC website, you know, everybody experiences at least one side effect from ages 18 to 55. But why is that so rampant? If you have a vaccination that has been tested for a long time. You know, if you're you're testing it for a long time, you're not going to have as many side effects because you're able to perfect it. But with the vaccine being rushed out, you know, so fast, you're you're like I said, you're a guinea pig for them. You really don't know the full level of effectiveness and the data says so. And like I said, when you go and do Google searches, it's all about encouraging everybody to take this vaccine. You know, it's the, the news talks about it. You know, you Google search it on on videos you have people personally I'm sure you got your cousin your auntie your uncle your niece your nephew whoever is trying to force you into taking it and now they're trying to get children to take the vaccine I mean it's just really really crazy to me why this is being pushed so much that is my thing. You know, like I said before, I totally understand people that feel like they should take the vaccine. But for me, what it all boils down to is you doing your research, talk to your doctor to see whether or not, you know, you are a, a good candidate for actually taking the vaccine and weighing out the pros and cons of the situation in regards to if you are someone that has pre-existing health conditions, whether you're someone that's elderly, uh, whether you are someone that's had uh, COVID-19 
19 and you're like I said, you're still experiencing some of the symptoms. I have been encountering lots of people that had COVID and they're still experiencing the symptoms. But I still, you know, do feel like it should be a choice amongst people whether or not they should, you know, be able to take the shot. That's just something that should be a personal choice to the person whether or not they feel like it's necessary for them to take the shot. It shouldn't be up to these jobs trying to dictate whether or not you can take the shot. You know, it shouldn't be up to restaurants to tell you you can't come inside the restaurants without without having a vaccination card. It shouldn't be up to venues telling you you can't go inside a concert until you're able to take a vaccination shot. I know that a couple of months ago or actually last year, there was a Van Gogh exhibition that had came out to uh, San Francisco. Well, that was supposed to come out to San Francisco. I believe they're out here in San Francisco and they will be leaving by June or so, if I'm not mistaken. But reading back then, they were saying that in order to actually get into the exhibition, you had to actually take the vaccine. And if you didn't, shit, your ass wasn't allowed no interest inside. So, you know, shit like that. I, I don't think that that's cool. And I do understand that, You like I said in the beginning, you know, the United States has been suffering economically for the past year and a half. And so they're trying to get back on their feet. So they're trying to get people out there to get the vaccine so that way they can get the economy up and running again. People back at work. They're trying to get the cash flow back into, you know, the economy. And I totally get that. But I don't think that it's cool to subject people to, you know, all these harmful side effects that they possibly could have from taking this um, vac- that this vaccine without the proper statistical data behind it. I just don't feel like that is right to make it mandatory without any statistical data. I, I don't think that that's fucking cool at all. But I just want y'all to keep in mind, you know, your health, your body. So you do you, boo. If you feel like you need to take the vaccine, go ahead and by all means, do what you feel is necessary for you in your health. If you are someone that does not feel comfortable with taking the vaccine and, and you feel like you still need to do a little bit more research behind it, by all means, do that too. You know, and another thing is you have... A lot of people out here saying, oh, you need to take the vaccine because you're subjecting other people to, you know, catching it or whatever. Like, let me tell you this. Like I said before, no one knows if this is this. What we do motherfucking know. We know that this is not 100 percent motherfucking effective. We know that this is not going to stop you from catching COVID motherfucking 19. So if y'all want to walk your asses out there without a goddamn mask and you feel like just because you took the goddamn vaccine and you want to take your ass down down to Tokyo you want to take your ass all the way down to motherfucking Columbia and get you some ass shots you want to subject yourself going to Hawaii or wherever the fuck you want to go and you get your ass on that plane and then you come back with motherfucking COVID bitch don't be mad because your ass caught that shit you know exactly why you caught that because you thought that you were safe out in these streets getting the COVID vaccine and thinking that you can parlay about about out here without taking the necessary precautions and then catch that regardless if you take the vaccine or not you still need to take precautions measures regardless I see a lot of people out here just acting super reckless that are just because they took the damn vaccine no take precautions measures regardless and because the fact that it's not 100% effective you really definitely need to you know make sure you you stand clear of other people keep your little social distance and stuff like that and do what you what you got to do for your health but you know don't be knocking other people because they won't get that damn vaccination shot that's all I got to say and on that note I want to thank you all for joining me again for another episode of vibe selection I'm your host Kyra and if you'd like to follow me on Instagram which I know all y'all will you can do so at I am Kyra Mahoney if you like to support the Vibe Selection Podcast, you can do so at www.patreon.com slash vibe selection. Or if you like to get any cool Vibe Selection merchandise, like a beach towel, I know summer is coming around, a cute little tote bag or whatever, you can do so at www.teespring.com slash vibe selection. Once again, I am your host, Kyra, and make sure y'all stay safe and stay healthy out there. I love y'all to death. I'll talk to y'all next week. Bye. Thank you for joining the Vibe Selection with Kyra. Come vibe out with us again next time and hear the latest on today's hot topics. Find
Find us on Instagram at I am Kyra Mahoney or donate at www.patreon.com slash vibe selection.